In this course, we will talk about root re-advertisement. We hope this course will help you understand the concept of root re-advertisement, learn the precautions for root re-advertisement, and master the root re-advertisement configuration methods of common routing protocols. First, let's look at the concept and principles of root re-advertisement. In most cases, multiple IP routing protocols exist on a network. For example, when devices provided by different vendors on the network run different IP routing protocols, when two networks using different IP routing protocols are combined, when a routing protocol is smoothly migrated to another, or when the large-scale network has logical routing protocol planning, take a bank network, for example. Banks are usually divided into headquarters, branches, and sub-branches. The headquarters has a backbone network. Branches have their own aggregation devices and LANs, and sub-branches have their own routing devices. Such a large-scale network requires redundancy. In this case, just one routing protocol may not be able to meet network reachability requirements by itself. On the network shown in the figure, R1 and R2 use RIP for interworking, whereas R2 and R3 use OSPF for interworking. R2 resides on the boundary between two routing protocol domains. R2 learns two routes from R1 through RIP and then adds the two routes to the routing table. R2 also learns two routes from R3 through OSPF and then adds the two routes into the routing table. However, the two domains cannot communicate with each other. To implement root interworking on the entire network, use root re-advertisement. Root re-advertisement is also called root import, which is a process of importing routing information from one routing protocol to another on the routing protocol domain boundary device. Root re-advertisement is directional. Only the routes that already exist in the routing table can be re-advertised. Initially, the routing table of R2 contains both RIP routes and OSPF routes. By default, R1 cannot learn routes from R3, nor can R3 learn routes from R1. In this case, configure route re-advertisement on R2 to import OSPF routes to RIP. In this way, R1 can learn the two routes that are re-advertised through RIP. Because root re-advertisement is directional, this configuration allows R1 to learn the two routes of R3, but R3 does not learn the two routes of R1. Therefore, to implement root interworking on the entire network, you need to deploy bidirectional root re-advertisement on R2. Root re-advertisement is required on the device that runs multiple routing protocols and a boundary of routing protocol domains. This device is called an Autonomous System Boundary Router, ASBR. Next, let's talk about the precautions for root re-advertisement. First, let's look at the root priority issue in root re-advertisement. On the network shown in the figure, R2 and R3 run both OSPF and BGP. R1 runs BGP and R4 runs OSPF. R1 has a root 1.1.1.1/32 and imports the root to BGP. It is required that R1 and R4 learn routes from each other. To meet this requirement, root re-advertisement needs to be deployed on R2 and R3. After R1 advertises the root 1.1.1.1/32 to the network through BGP, both R2 and R3 learn the root through BGP. After the BGP root is imported to OSPF on R2, the root forms an OSPF root. Consequently, R4 learns this OSPF root and sends it to R3. In this case, R3 obtains two routes destined for 1.1.1.1/32, one of which is the BGP route learned from R1, and the other is the OSPF route learned from R4. 
Which one should R3 add to its routing table? Each routing protocol has its own priority. The protocol priorities defined by devices of different vendors may be different. When the router receives routes with the same destination address, same network ID, and same mask from different protocol types, the router selects the route with a similar priority value and adds the route to the routing table. The priority value of OSPF is 150, whereas the priority of BGP is 255. In this case, R3 adds the OSPF route to the routing table. If R3 receives a packet with a destination address of 1.1.1.1/32, R3 forwards the packet according to the OSPF route, and the next hop is R4. The forwarding path is a suboptimal one because it is longer than the path between R3 and R1. This figure shows the priorities of different routing protocols used by Huawei Datacom products. The priority of a route can be manually modified. To prevent the suboptimal path problem, you can change the priority of the BGP route to be higher than that of the OSPF route on R3. The smaller the priority value, the higher the priority. Next, let's talk about the backward route import problem that may occur during route re-advertisement. On the network shown in the figure, if the route priority is not changed on R3, R3 adds the OSPF route 1.1.1.1/32 to its routing table and uses the OSPF route received from R4 to forward the packet destined for 1.1.1.1/32 because bidirectional route re-advertisement is deployed on R2 and R3. Backward route import may occur. That is, the OSPF route in the routing table of R3 is imported back to BGP. To prevent this problem, you can modify the route priority. Alternatively, you can configure a route policy on R3 to filter out the OSPF route. In most cases, route import involves a large number of routes. In this case, you can set a tag value for the routes to be advertised to OSPF before configuring route re-advertisement on R2. Then configure a route policy on R3 to filter out the routes imported to OSPF based on the tag value. Next, let's talk about the metric issue. OSPF uses the path cost as the metric, whereas RIP uses the hop count on the forwarding path of data packets as the metric. How can we determine the hop count if OSPF routes are imported to RIP? In fact, the metric can be set manually as required. If the metric value is not set manually during route re-advertisement configuration, the device uses the default value. Next, let's learn how to configure route re-advertisement. In the view of a routing protocol, run the import route command to import routes from another routing protocol. This example shows how to import routes from another routing protocol to OSPF process 1. The list shows the types of routes that can be imported. 